Hi, and welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. This time we're going to talk about for loops, and I've created this class that I've called for loop alongside all our other classes. So the first thing I'm going to do is write our we class description, like so, and put the date. And let's try to remember the structure of our for loop. The first thing that we had before the first semicolon is the initialization of our index. Then the comparison or the test that keeps the loop going if it evaluates to true. Finally, we have our increment. So the first thing I'm going to do is initialize the index that I'm going to use to count how many times we've gone through the loop. And I'm going to initialize it to zero. And I'm going to add a space after that, just for readability purposes, nothing else. You can skip it if you want, but I like putting that in. And I think so should you, um, just so your program is more easily readable. Then the comparison. In this case, I'm only going to repeat this loop if i is less than 10, which in the beginning it will be because it will be 0. And finally, the increment. Every time we run through the loop, we're going to increase i by 1. Remember that i++ happens at the end of the loop. Okay, so what can we do here? Just like we did with the for loop, we can print out the index, the value of the index. And here we go. We go from 0 to 9 as per expected. When the value is 10, i is 10. 10 is not less than 10, so it doesn't run. This is reasonable, and this is what we've told it to do. Okay, let's create uh, uh, some user input so that the user can input how many times we're going to print and up to which number we're going to print. We're going to also need to import this scanner. We've done this so many times, so I've kind of gone over it a bit quicker than usual because we have already done this. Um, so I don't think that you have much problem. So enter the number up to which we will count, and then we will simply read it and put it in our variable num. And then here we have the value that the user has input. We've read it with the scanner dot next end after asking the user um, to input a number. Now here, our variable that's initializing is i equals 0, so we're going to start counting at 0. i is less than 10, so we're going to count up to 10, and then we're going to increment i after each iteration of the loop. Instead of 10, we want to put num here so that we will count up to the number. So in here, we will ask the user for a value, and then we'll count up to that value, but not including the value, so from 0 to 4. If we wanted to count up to and including the value, we would simply do i is less than or greater than num. So if we run this again and we put 5, you will see that indeed we go from 0 to 5. So this time, it is interesting because the user has put the value 5, which kind of makes us expect that we're going to see 5 numbers coming out um, of the output, but we actually see 6 numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so that's 3 and 3 there. So we can do it this way, or we can do it this way. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have there the um, the user input and the for loop in its very basic form. In the next couple sections, we're going to be seeing how to create groups of variables and how to um, interact with these groups and do some more interesting stuff with them. These groups are called arrays, and you might have heard of them before if you've done any sort of programming. Um, but if you haven't, that's okay, and we'll uh, look at arrays, and for loops are vital in uh, in going through the values of these arrays. Even though if you don't know what those are, don't worry about it. And we'll go through that in the next couple sections. But for now, that's everything there is to uh, for loops. You can use the user input here, you can start at different values, you can play around with a plus plus. You can do anything you want here. You can do minus minus to decrease the value, for example, and things like that. Play around with it. And obviously, if you have any questions, you can always ask uh, by going to the right side of Udemy and asking me a question. But if not, stick around and let's go into the next section. And so I'll see you there.